Buckle up, besties, because today we're going to be spilling the hottest tea on human biology, and we're going to be talking about the menstrual cycle. Let's get started. So here's a scoop. The menstrual cycle is the body's monthly will we or won't we make a baby storyline. It is the ultimate collab between your ovaries, which are your egg slinging producers, and your endometrium, which is the uterus's interior designer. Together, they're going to throw the ultimate hormonal house party, hoping an embryo will RSVP, if you know what I mean. First up, let's talk about the endometrium. She is our fancy lining inside of our uterus. She's made up of two layers, the functional layer and our basal layer. So when it comes to the functional layer, she is the glam one totally influenced by hormonal fluctuations. She gets thick every month preparing for pregnancy. But if there's no pregnancy, she storms out dramatically every month, aka your period. Now when it comes to the basal layer, that's our low key but essential part of our endometrium. It's like the best friend who's always there to help build you up after a breakup. This particular layer is responsible for regenerating the functional layer after shitting. Now here's the ultimate plot twist. The menstrual cycle isn't just one storyline, it's actually a double feature. We've got the ovarian cycle, that's all about growing those eggs and then deciding which one is gonna take center stage during ovulation. And then we have our uterine endometrial cycle. And this one's about the endometrium getting real thick and cozy and then potentially ghosting us if no fertilized egg shows up. So we have two different plots, same timeline, both waiting to see fertilization is gonna happen or if we're gonna be hitting the reset button for next month. When your uterus officially shows up and joins the party, it's called monarchy. This is just a fancy way of saying your first period. And it usually shows up somewhere uninvited in your early adolescence, like surprise, I'm here now and I'm staying. Once monarchy hits, the monthly cycle kicks in and it keeps rolling like a hormonal subscription box every single month. The only time she takes a break is when you're prego and your body's busy building a baby or when you hit menopause where your ovaries are like, ma'am, we've clocked out for good. No more egg slinging, no more periods, uh, bye bye Your cycle length is typically going to be somewhere between 20 to 35 days, depending on the person and the drama going on that month. But on average, it should be somewhere around 28 days, like the gold standard of menstrual mayhem. So let's start with day one of your cycle. That is the very first day of of your period, AKA your uterus throwing out last month's decorating attempt because no embryo ever showed up. Now let's talk ovulation. That's the moment that the ovary throws an egg out like it's tossing a bouquet at a wedding. It usually happens 14 days before your next period starts. So in a classic 28 day cycle, that would be around day 14. This would mean that 14 days leading up to ovulation is called our pre-ovulatory phase where the egg is getting prepped like it's going to prom. And 14 days after ovulation, that is your post-ovulatory phase where the uterus is lighting up candles and fluffing the pillows, hoping for a fertilized egg to come Netflix and chill. So here's where things really get spicy is that each month the cycle has two different names. One for what's happening with the ovaries and one for what's happening with our uterus. So before ovulation, our ovaries are gonna go through the follicular phase. This is where the egg is getting ready to make her debut. At the same time, the uterus is going through the menstrual phase and the proliferation phase where it's shedding out the old decor and redecorating really cute under estrogen's influence. Now, after ovulations, the ovaries are gonna go through the luteal phase. And this is where the egg is ultimately going to be released and now it's time for hormonal hustle time. And the uterus is going to be going through the secretory phase where progesterone is gonna be in charge now, making everything all warm, gooey, and embryo ready. It's basically a hormonal tag team where the ovaries and the uterus are doing separate things, but they're still working together. So let's start with the pre-ovulatory phase, AKA the part of your cycle where the ovaries are basically running their own version of America 
Canada's next top egg. This phase officially kicks off on day one of your period. Yep, while you're dealing with cramps and cravings, your ovaries are already backstage prepping for the next egg and her big debut. This whole thing spans between week one and week two on a typical four week cycle. So let's set the stage for this hormonal drama, shall we? Meet the masterminds, your hypothalamus and your pituitary. These two are the CEO and assistant manager of your reproductive system. The hypothalamus in your brain is like the shady puppet master behind the scenes, whispering sweet nothings in the form of GnRH, also known as gonadotropin releasing hormone. This GnRH is going to tell the anterior pituitary gland, which is the loyal assistant to the hypothalamus, to release two specific hormones. Number one, we're going to release follicle stimulating hormone. And also number two is our luteinizing hormone. So here's the deal, before puberty, GnRH is super chill, like elevator music playing on loop. But when puberty hits, oh, oh, oh girl, GnRH is going to start pulsing like it's at a nightclub, changing beats and volumes depending on the vibe. Those pulse patterns are going to tell the pituitary how much follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone they're going to drop into the bloodstream and then boom, the follicular phase is officially lit. Now inside your ovaries, you've got a lineup of ovarian follicles. Those are those tiny little sacs that are like egg apartments. Each one is going to contain a primary oocyte, which is also known as a baby egg in training, surrounded by two groups of hormone secreting cells. First up, you've got your theca cells, which handle androgens like a pro. And then you've got your granulosa cells, which are going to turn those androgens into estrogen estrogen magic. Throughout the follicular phase, they are going to grow, glow up, and basically fight it out in a full-blown egg pageant to see who gets picked for ovulation. All I can say is, is that one follicle gets to Tierra Darling and the rest, they're eliminated. So the real hormone hustle will begin in the first 10 days of your cycle. This is where the ovaries start building the dream team. First up, we have our theca cells. Those are the bad boy bodybuilders of the ovaries. Around days one to 10, they're gonna start developing LH receptors. And when luteinizing hormone starts to roll in, these theca cells are gonna be like, say less, I've got you. And they're going to start pumping out androstenedione, which is a type of androgen, basically a hormone with testosterone vibes. Next up, our granulosa cells are also going to start leveling up. They're going to develop our follicle stimulating hormone receptors. And when these guys start to show up and hit the scene, they're going to produce an enzyme called aromatase, which if I'm being honest, it's really like the magical fairy godmother of your cycle. Aromatase is going to swoop in and it's going to take that androdestinium from the theca cells and transform it into estradiol, aka one of the bougiest, most fabulous forms of estrogen. And just like that, boom, estrogen has entered the chat. And that's when the endometrium is going to start fluffing up. All right, besties, buckle up because between day 10 and day 14, this is when the plot thickens. And so does your endometrium. Those granulosa cells are gonna start leveling up like a boss. They've already been vibing with that follicle stimulating hormone, but now they're also developing their own luteinizing hormone receptors because why sell for one hormone hookup when you could have two? Meanwhile, follicles are growing like they're on fertility steroids and estrogen is rising. As our estrogen levels climb higher and higher, it pulls a sneaky little negative feedback move basically telling the pituitary gland, hey babe, we've got enough follicle stimulating hormone, you can chill now. So the pituitary gland is going to listen and it's going to dial back on that follicle stimulating hormone, which means only the most fabulous follicle, the one that has the most follicle stimulating hormone receptors is going to keep going strong while the others are going to fade away into hormonal obscurity. Hashtag only the strong survive. This is where that dominant follicle is going to turn into that girl. She's not just sitting pretty. She's out here slaying the estrogen game and flooding the bloodstream like she owns the place. So here's where the plot twist kind of hits a little bit harder. So you remember earlier we had that same estrogen that was saying 
saying, chill, we don't need so much of this follicle stimulating hormone earlier. Well, suddenly it does a complete 180 and it becomes a positive feedback diva. Yep, she flips the script and starts screaming, release the hormones. And Bessie, you better believe that the pituitary is gonna be listening. Cue the flood of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, an all out hormonal fireworks show that's going to pop off one to two days before ovulation. This surge is literally what's causing the follicle to burst open, tossing that egg out like confetti. So while the ovaries are over here running an egg boot camp, our uterus is gonna be doing its own thing. So let's break it down. We have act one, the menstrual cycle. This is a uterus's version of a break up in a closet purge. She's like, no pregnancy again. Fine, toss out the lining. So the functional layer of the endometrium, that plush, cozy stuff from our life cycle is going to start to dump out of the vaginal door in the form of your period. And that's basically your menstrual phase. It usually lasts approximately five days. Now on to at two, the proliferation phase. Now estrogen is going to come in like a designer from HGTV and it's gonna say let's rebuild bigger, better, and thicker. The endometrium is going to thicken and the glands are going to grow. But estrogen is not done yet, y'all. It's also going to help change the cervical mucus from thick and clingy to thin and stretchy and sperm friendly. And all this helps maximize the chance of fertilization, which is gonna be the highest around days 11 to 15, peak baby making honey. And all of this helps maximize the chance of fertilization, which is the highest between days 11 and 15. So let's head back to our ovaries. Ovulation has happened and the egg has left the building. And now it's time for the ovary after party crew to take over. Enter our corpus luteum, AKA the glow up follicle. This has now become luteinized. That means that it got marinated in a ton of luteinizing hormone right before ovulation. So here's the thing. Those theca cells are still out there and they're producing that androstedendium like it's their full-time job. So what about those granulosa cells? They're still there and they're multitasking. They're still flipping a lot of that androstedendium into estradiol, AKA estrogen, but it's going to be doing something a little bit juicier than before. These luteinized granulosa cells are going to respond to that lower luteinizing hormone levels post ovulation by leveling up their enzyme game. They're going to activate a mouthful of a superstar, also known as P450 SCC, also known as the cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme. Whew, that's a lot to say five times fast. These bad boys are going to turn cholesterol into prednisolone, which is basically the raw ingredient of progesterone. Now that progesterone is running the show, there's gonna be a few major things that are gonna go down. First up, she's going to throw a negative feedback shade at the pituitary gland saying, stop with that follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, we're good now, I don't need you anymore. Meanwhile, our granulosa cells are also releasing something called inhibin, which is progesterone's hype girl. It's going to tell the pituitary to cool it on that FSH. While both our FSH and LH are suppressed, estrogen levels are going to take a dip and progesterone is officially going to take the crown for the rest of the cycle. But really, what's the big deal about progesterone? She's not just chill, she's preparing the uterus like it's a five-star fertility spa. She's gonna calm that endometrium down, make it sticky and cozy, getting it ready to host a fertilized egg should one decide to check in. So when progesterone levels rise and estrogen levels fall, it's like the uterus is getting a signal. Girl, ovulation happened, time to dim the lights, fluff the pillows and make ready for potential implantation. Now let's head back to the uterus. So under her influence, the uterus is going to enter into its secretory phase. And let me tell you, this phase is giving Pinterest perfect baby nursery, just in case, kind of vibes. Spiral arteries are gonna start to grow bigger and they're gonna start coiling up for implantation. The uterine glands are gonna start oozing out nutrient-rich, cozy mucus. But here's the catch. 
On day 15, that prime time fertilization window starts slamming shut. That cervical mucus is going to go from that silky and sperm friendly environment to a very thick, sticky, very much no boys allowed. Now let's head back to our ovaries, more specifically that corpus luteum. Remember her we talked about earlier? She's going to start shriveling up if no fertilized egg shows up. She's ultimately going to turn into a corpus albicans, which is just a crusty, non-functional blah that doesn't make any more hormones. The party's over, the DJ has packed up, and the vibe is gone. As our estrogen and our progesterone levels start to drop, those spiral arteries are gonna start to collapse and the functional layer of the endometrium starts peeling off and the uterus is like, well, guess no baby this month, let's start to clean house. This shedding is going to kick off a brand new menstrual cycle and with that, another shot of fertilization for next month. Now that we reviewed everything we need to know when it comes to the menstrual cycle, let's test our understanding of what we learned with some practice questions. Yes, we've made it to the end of our hormone fueled roller coaster. If your brain is now 98% progesterone and 2% caffeine, you have officially entered the cycle club. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a chance about anything we're gossiping about when it comes to anatomy. Drop a comment down below or any questions that you may have. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where you can snatch up this PowerPoint as well as any other goodies that we have in the store. And I'm gonna catch you in the next video.